Okay, if you haven't watched the video on how to do utility maximization in general, go watch that first. So this is a specific case for a Cobb-Douglas preference structure. So we've got a utility function, price of x is 2, price of y is 1, income is 100. In general, what you want to do is fit that into your Lagrangian. That's what a general Lagrangian looks like. Now let's fit in the specifics for our case. So we've got 4, x to the 1 half, y to the 1 half, that's the utility function plus lambda, income is 100, minus the price of x, which is 2, times the amount of x, minus the price of y, which is 1, times the amount of y. So that is what our Lagrangian looks like in this specific case. If, say, you're not given the price of y, you would just leave the py right there, grind through it, just like we're doing now. So, first thing we have is partial the Lagrangian with respect to x. So what do we have here? 1 half times 4, x to the minus 1 half, y to the 1 half, plus, rather minus, lambda times the price of x, which is 2, is equal to 0. So we have then uh, 2, x to the minus 1 half, y to the 1 half, minus 2, lambda, is equal to 0. So that's the first first order condition. With respect to y, partial lambda, partial y, this is equal to 1 half, 4, x to the 1 half, y to the minus 1 half, minus lambda. Because the price of y is equal to 1, that's our second first order condition. And then with respect to the Lagrangian multiplier, it's just the budget constraint once again. 100 minus 2x minus y is equal to 0. So, where do you go from here? Take your first order conditions for your two goods, combine them to get the marginal rate of substitution equals the price ratio. So we've got the marginal utility of x, 2x to the minus 1 half, y to the 1 half, divided by the marginal utility of y, is equal to the ratio of prices, the price of x over the price of y. So again, remember, negative exponent means it flips to the other side of the dividing line. So this 2 cancels with this 2. That x to the 1 half moves down underneath. x to the 1 half times x to the 1 half. y to the negative 1 half moves up on top. y to the 1 half, y to the 1 half is equal to 2. So y to the 1 half times y to the 1 half is just y. Same for x. y over x equals 2. So now we have y is equal to 2x. Now we go back to our budget line, 100 minus 2x minus y is equal to 0. Plug that in right there. 100 minus 2x minus 2x is equal to 0. 100 is equal to 4x, or x is equal to 25. Again, with Cobb-Douglas, one of the nice properties is the demand for x, as it depends on prices and income, is equal to that exponent, which is in this case is equal to one half times income divided by the price of x. So, which price of x here was two, so income divided by four is 25. So now we have x, what's y? Well, take that result, plug it in right there, and y is equal to 50. Two times 25 is 50. So now we have x, now we have y. If you need indirect utility, v of prices and income, all you have to do is take that utility function way back there, plug in what you've got. So the utility function was 4 times x to the 1 half power times y to the 1 half power. And there you go. So you, if you've got a calculator, you can grind out some number for that. Same steps every single time. Write out the Lagrangian. First order condition for x, first order condition for y, first order condition for lambda. Ratio of marginal utilities equals ratio of prices. Solve for x as a function of y or vice versa. Plug that into the budget constraint. That gives you one of your demands. Take that back. That will give you your other demand. Take your two demands, plug them into the utility function. That gives you indirect utility.